everyone welcome back to my channel if you haven't already make sure that you subscribe so that you're always notified when I put out a new video so I put a poll on my Instagram asking you guys what you wanted to see next and it was either um, a day in the life of a six month old or marriage Q&A and marriage Q&A won by a landslide and one of those people that actually voted for the marriage Q&A was Alex my husband and when I told him that he actually had to be in the video, he was like, that is not what I had in mind. I thought you were going to be answering the questions on your own. But that would be kind of weird. And I feel like I could lie and just make this stuff up and be like, oh, our marriage is so perfect. Um, so he's actually going to be in this video today. And yeah, I'm excited to answer your guys' questions. And he hasn't read these questions yet, so it'll be interesting to see what um, his reaction is and what his answers are as well. So let's get started. This is my husband, Alex, my handsome husband, Alex, the father of baby Levi, uh, Levi's twin. And we're gonna be answering your guys' questions today, the questions that you have sent um, to me on Instagram. And this is your first time hearing these questions, so. Okay, so the first question is, what is something that you don't like that Alex does and vice versa? Okay. So, I'd have to say it was more towards the beginning of the marriage. I think you kind of go into marriage with this expectation that everything's going to be all perfect. And um, this isn't to say that you're, like, gross. But, um... He's a very clean and organized person, but the one thing that really bothered me at the beginning of our marriage was that when you would pee, you would leave pee all over the people, the people, the toilet bowl, and it would just sit there and it would get crusted up, and I wouldn't notice until I'd go and clean the bathroom. Um, and that was really gross for me. And so that really, really bothered me because I was the one that would clean the bathroom. And it's not that he couldn't clean the bathroom, I just chose to clean the bathroom because I do a better job at cleaning the bathroom. But um, it was really annoying to find all that like pee on the toilet bowl. And now, it's just like little tiny things because I'm like super, I don't want to say OCD, but like I like things in a specific way. And if he'll dry the bottle and he'll just leave like a dish towel just on the counter that like really grinds my gears just like little things where he's like it's fine it's all gonna go back in its place at the end of the day but I'm like it can go back in its place like right now so that everything's where it has to be and that's my answer what's your answer so one thing that Gemma does that bothers me um, it's not a big thing it's also like a small thing but um, it's when she has like a when she has like a glass of ice cream or something, or what? You know what I'm saying? Okay. When she uses a dish, um, usually a mug for like coffee or ice cream or whatever cereal, um, and she's done with it, she'll put it in the sink, but then she'll just leave it there. And if it's dry, let's say like it's a mug of ice cream, and it's dry, she'll she'll leave it there. And she won't add water. She won't rinse it. And next time that the dishes are washed, usually I'm the one that washes the dishes, all that stuff is like dried onto the glass or to the, whatever the dish was, and it's super hard to clean off. And I'm always telling her, like, just rinse it. Like, it's not that hard. Just If you put it in there, just pour some water in there so that whenever the dish is washed, all that stuff just washes out. Um, and she's gotten a little better with it. I think she's still, I still have to tell her, like, hey, you gotta, you gotta rinse this stuff. Um, but that's... <laughs> That's the only one I can think of. Are you sure? Yeah. Okay. There's... The other one I was going to say was, um, you leave the, the, and the wet wipes, you leave the thing open all the time. <laughs> okay. I'm I don't, not all the time. Not all the time. I find it open all the time after you use it. I don't say anything, I just close it. But... Okay. Mm -hmm. That's not true. Okay. I'm going to take pictures every time. Okay. Okay. The next question is, what's the story behind your marriage? How did you guys start 
to date each other. Okay. I'll let you answer that one. How far back do you want me to go? You can start from the beginning. <laughs> okay. From the beginning, like... Like Old Country Buffet. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> A long story. Just make it short, short and sweet. Okay. So, what's the deal with us getting married? What's um, the deal? That's <laughs> what it sounded like. <laughs> okay. Um, so, I guess the story is um, I had, well, we grew up together. We grew up in church together. We have been going to the same church since I, I've been going to the same church since I was born. And Gemma started going to this to our five. church uh, when she was five and so we were both very little when we started and we grew up together and our families would go to the same cell group at her house actually for people that don't know what a cell group is it's like a bible study and it happens mm -hmm. every day every day every once a week once a week yeah it happens once a week so we would go to her house once a week and um i, I mean we I was going to that, I think, since I was a baby as well. Um, but once I was like five, there was, I had started, I developed a big crush on her. And there was one time in particular where we went to the Old Country Buffet um, and it, as with the cell group. And the kids were just Gemma and her sister and my brother and me. Uh, so we would all sit at a table together and eat and hang out. And I remember, she doesn't remember, I don't think you're... I think your mom remembers um, that I, I gave her a kiss on the cheek and later when we were all leaving her mom and dad were standing at the door and she has a younger sister like two years younger closer to my age and oh, she's older than I am for those that don't know yeah. um, <laughs> but she has a sister that's closer to my age and when I was walking out I said I told I went up to her mom and I was like uh, I kissed your daughter and she was, and right at that time, the younger sister was walking by. She's like, her? And I was like, no, the older one. Um, how would you feel, okay, if we have a daughter, how would you feel if a kid went up to you and was like, I kissed your daughter? That was like bold. Yeah. That was pretty bold. I'd be impressed. Well, you'd be impressed I'd be for impressed. real? I'd be impressed. I'm pretty sure you'd be really upset. Uh, yeah, I would be impressed. Okay. I'd be impressed that he had the guts to come tell me that. Okay. If At that age. Okay. If it was like a 10-year-old, then... You'd fight him? Yeah. Okay. I'd push him or something. Push him? <laughs> um, but yeah, so I guess that was the first, like, romantic encounter that we had. <laughs> <laughs> and then we had several others where, well, on my end, they were romantic. Yeah, not and on my And on her end, she... Um, well, because he's younger, I always looked at him like just some little kid, like... But she would, like, flirt back, and I... No, I no, wouldn't. Well, okay. okay. She would flirt back, and I would interpret it as, um, you know, she was responding. I'm just a very friendly person. Yeah, That's okay. it. Okay. And, and so, uh, anyway, long story short, um, eventually we started talking again, um, and this was like, I was finishing up high school, um, when we started talking again, and then that summer we like started dating mm -hmm. and yeah dated for for uh close to five years almost five years and then Which we got married so long that was a long time that's so that's such a long time um yeah and then we got married and, and then we had a kid and then we had a kid right <laughs> away that's like the typical christian marriage yeah. like okay. married right after college and then had a kid and then yeah Okay, the next question is, what is your significant other's most attractive trait slash feature? You can go. I answered the last one. It's definitely changed ever since you became a dad. Okay. I think just seeing him with Levi, that is like the most attractive thing to me. Because when he's like, um, like taking care of him or... I don't know, there's times where I'm like watching him on our baby monitor and it's just like the cutest thing. I think that's like when I find you the most attractive. And I... Yes. <laughs> uh, well, they say men are more visual, so mine is definitely more of a physical feature. It's my butt. No. I was going to say your boobs. 
Oh. <laughs> um, Not anymore. <laughs> well, I think mine has always been, it still is, your eyes. Mm -hmm. I told you that from when we first started dating. Mm -hmm. And it's still, I think, to me, your most attractive feature. What about, like, trait? Trait? What do you mean? Like a character trait? Yeah. Mm. I like that you're outgoing. Mm -hmm. Um, because I'm friendly, but to people that I know, mm -hmm. I'm not like, I'm not good at talking to people I don't know. Um, so I always found it very attractive when we would go to like my company parties, mm -hmm. and you were the one talking with everyone. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know. That was just always very attractive to me. I think your physical feature that I find most attractive is your butt. My butt? Mm -hmm. No, I'm just kidding. Is your smile. I tell you that all the time. You do. You have a really nice smile. Thanks. You also have a really that's, nice butt though. That's coming from a dental professional. Yeah, he has a really nice smile and a nice tushy. <laughs> the next question is, how do you guys share responsibilities now that you are new parents? Good one. That is a good question. So now that he's a little older, I feel like we've found a good balance um, as far as sharing responsibilities goes. Um, when he was first born, I was kind of the one that was spending most of the time with the baby, and then he was taking care of like cleaning, um, f cooking, and um, just kind of running the house. Um, he had a month off for his paternity leave, so that was awesome because he really helped me a lot. Um, you really need so much help during that time, that recovery time. And um, now that he's older, we've found a good balance um, in sharing those responsibilities. So now I'm the one who's cleaning, and it's not that he can't clean, it's just I prefer how I clean. I do all the deep cleaning. He helps me, you know, vacuum our floors and our carpets and stuff um but for the most part i do most of the cleaning and then he still does most of the cooking but i've taken on some days now for cooking as well and then as far as taking care of levi goes i do work um and that i do have to be in the office um so on those days he's watching him he's still working from home and then on the days that i'm off i'm with baby levi and then on the weekends we like it's just we kind of all we spend time together and then at night um we kind of share the feedings like he's not waking up too much anymore but he, there's nights where he does wake up quite a few times so we'll like take turns like you take this one you take the first one i'll take the next one like like that so i think we've found a good balance now as far as like responsibilities go but it was definitely really tough at first and I'd add that they're not like defined responsibilities. It's not like I strictly do all the cooking yeah. and she strictly does all yeah. the cleaning. It's more like, but you like, know, you just kind of pick up the slack wherever the other one is, is lacking. Like sometimes right. she might be feeling sick and I might have to do a little more. Right. Or like when I got my wisdom teeth pulled out, she was doing a little more because, you know, I was um, just to. Yeah, yeah. resting for a couple days. Yeah. Um, but like the more physically demanding stuff, he, he does that, like the shoveling the mowing, mowing the lawn and taking out the trash and it's not that I can't do it I just I like to think that you do it because <laughs> you don't want me to do it it's true okay good all right next question how is sex after a baby <laughs> Well, I'll say for six weeks it's non-existent. <laughs> it's a lot of teasing. Uh, teasing? Yeah. Who was teasing? There was no teasing. I remember my mom would message me and she'd be like, you can't have sex. And I'm like, I don't want to have sex. Like the last thing you want is to have sex because <laughs> you just got wrecked down there. So. Um, for six weeks, it, nothing happens, um, and then um, you just kind of wean back into it. Um, it's definitely more like on a schedule now. Like, you have to plan it. It's not like spontaneous like before it was like, 
I don't know. I think it's still spontaneous. You think so? Yeah. Like not all the time, though. I think. But like, there's times where it's like he's napping. Let's go, 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 go. Like. That's what I'm saying. I think that's more spontaneous because it wasn't planned. It was like he went down for his nap. We have nothing. Not that we don't have anything else to do, but like, there's nothing pressing to take care of at the moment. Like, yeah. Let's go do it. Okay. I guess. I think it's spontaneous in that sense. Yes, but I feel like it is like I don't know. You kind of have to like find time now. I do. And before it was just like whenever, whenever. we were feeling it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and there's been times <laughs> where you're trying to, and then he wakes up. <laughs> when he was first like born, like first few months, it was really hard to find time to do it. And I think he our... slept in our room too. So yeah, but he was sleeping in his bassinet, so um, he was still nearby. And when he would cry, it would just completely kill the mood. So, yes, I think you have to be more, um... Intentional. Intentional, yes. Definitely. Bless you. Bless you, salut. Okay, next question says... When... Sorry. Okay. The next question is when's baby number two? Levi is adorable now. Imagine his siblings. LOL. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Uh, We're in no rush to yeah. have the next baby. Um, we have other stuff we have to plan right now. Yeah. Um, career changes and mm -hmm. different housing to fit another baby. So we gotta get that figured out first and then we can figure out when Levi will have a sibling. Because Levi wasn't planned. <laughs> he was not an accident, but... He wasn't an accident because we knew what we were doing yeah. and like we weren't being careful, but he definitely wasn't... We didn't think it would happen that soon. Yeah, so um, we're definitely going to be more careful about this 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 time around and we're, we're actually planning, you know? Um, so... Yes, he will have more siblings, but not in the near future, I would say. Yeah, you won't hear news this year. Let's yeah. put it that way. Not this year. Okay. The last question is, what is one piece of advice you would give to anyone who is dating or recently engaged? So, my piece of advice would be to have a solid financial plan. Um... I think we went into marriage just because we both had our careers and we were making, you know, a lot more money than what we were used to uh, with our just like jobs. Um, now we were in our careers and we were making, um, you know, decent money. So we were like, oh, we got this. Like, it's, it's all good. We can afford a very luxurious lifestyle. Um, so we went way in over our heads um, into like how we were going to live and where we were going to live and what we were going to buy. Um, so definitely go in with a good financial plan where um, you won't like... Just because you can afford it doesn't mean you should buy it. Yes. Um, save, save, save. Um, and just from the beginning, even while you guys are dating, like make sure that finance is something that you guys talk about um, very openly. Uh, not to hide anything from your um, partner because that tends to be a really big issue and I think I don't think we ever really hid our finances from each other um, we were very transparent with that and um, that really helped us um, just plan I guess financially uh, now our like now I feel like we kind of have it a little more together but when we first got married we were just like we did not have the right menta mentality I guess um, yeah so that would be my advice just have a really good financial plan um, I'd say mine would be maybe geared toward some younger folks or people that are maybe looking to start dating or aren't dating yet. Um, I would say to date with the intention of marriage. And I don't mean that the person you date you have to marry or that you have to marry right away. But it does help. Um, 
it does help to go into dating if you know that the intention or the idea is to is, is marriage that the end goal is marriage because um, you can start looking out for things that you would want or you wouldn't want in a spouse mm -hmm. um, because I think sometimes when you're younger you might you know have a as yeah have a significant other and they you might see things that you wouldn't want in a spouse mm -hmm. but in the moment you're like well yeah, I'm probably not gonna marry this person mm -hmm. my thing to that would be like well then why are you dating them you know yeah. and if you're looking to get into the dating scene um, it doesn't mean you're gonna get married next year or even in the next two years um, but then the other thing you should consider is um, you know we'll give you the Christian perspective because that's our, our perspective um, is if you're not looking to get married in the next three four years that's a very long time to date and it's a very long time um, you know to stay pure and <laughs> mm -hmm. you know we did it almost five years and you know we'll tell you it's tough it's very tough and yeah. um, it's I won't say impossible but it's pretty <laughs> pretty close to impossible to go that long so if you're not trying to get married for 10 years you know I'd probably consider not dating because you're just putting yourself in a position where you're gonna lose mm -hmm. um, and okay. <laughs> and if your intention isn't to get married or to you know you're not looking for those qualities uh, for like those spouse qualities um, then you're also kind of opening yourself up to getting hurt mm -hmm. um, because you know you might say oh well this will only last a year or two and then I'll find someone else but then you get really attached to that person and yeah. you either are in an unhealthy relationship or you got to cut it and you're just opening yourself up to, to get hurt, so mm -hmm. um, I think that would be my advice. Okay. Alright. Well, thank you for joining me on my video and yeah. answering some questions. Thank you guys for sending in your questions and I hope this was enjoyable for you guys and that you guys had fun watching us and hearing more about our marriage. Um, and yeah. Thank you guys for watching. Make sure that you give this video a thumbs up and that you subscribe to my channel so that you're always notified of when I put out new videos. And the next video will be more about Baby Neva. I know he was here, but the next one will be just highlighting him. Okay, he's over it. Okay, bye guys. Thank you.